God bless each and every one of you. This is the Word of Power Gospel Hour. My name is Reverend Ronald Davis. We thank you for tuning in to the program tonight. I pray it will bless you. I pray the Word of God will be quickened unto your spirit and your soul. And I pray the Word will challenge you tonight. This is a hard message to preach. It's not easy to stand up and preach this on TV. But you know what? we got to preach people out of their comfort zones. In Galatians chapter 1, Paul said, if, any, if, if, any, if him or any, an angel or anybody else preach another gospel other than Jesus Christ, let him be accursed. He said that two times in Galatians chapter 1. You know, sometimes we preach another gospel. Hear what I'm saying today. We preach another gospel. We preach people to sleep. Come on, we need to preach and wake them up with the fire of God. Fire them up, get them back up, get them out about them doors, doing, the, doing God's business. Amen. We need to stir them up, fire them up. Amen. We need a Holy Ghost move again in the church. Can I hear an amen? We need a true Holy Ghost revival to restore the joy of our salvation again. Amen. amen. We need to be revived again and repent and do the first works again. Revelation chapter 2 verse 6, it said, Jesus said to repent. They, they have left their first love. He said, as many as I love, I rebuke. Repent and do the first works again. We need a revival to revive the works of God in the church again. What we need in the church of God again is a demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit again. We need to see harvest of people coming in to the kingdom. Amen. This is the harvest field. Jesus said the harvest is white and harvest ripe, but the laborers are few. Nobody wants to be laborers. Nobody wants to work no more. On In the natural, nobody wants to work. And in the spirit, nobody wants to work. Can I hear an amen? amen? That's just spiritual laziness. Come on. Yep. Repent. That's what he told him in Revelation chapter 2, uh, verse 6. Repent. You got lazy on me. Some of you got lazy. Come on. Hallelujah. Some of you playing church. Come on. Church as usual, playing church. That's what this message is about. For too many times we went to church and we sat there and we've done nothing. Sit on our duff. Come on. We need to preach people out of their comfort zones. Paul said over there, if I bring another gospel, any other gospel than other Jesus Christ, let them be a curse. In Revelation chapter 22, it talks about, do not add to the word of God, do not take away from the word of God, or God will add unto the plague unto you, or take away from your part of the book. Come on. In Exodus, Moses said, do not add to the word of God, or take away from it. Amen. We need to preach the pure, unadulterated word of God again. Preachers preach the word of God, preach the Bible if they don't like it, there's something wrong with them, not you. If they're offended, don't you get offended. Keep doing what God's called you to do. I preached that on the last program. Amen. If they're offended, there's something wrong in their flesh, and they need to get their flesh crucified and get it right. Amen. If you got a Bible, just go with me today. We're here to stir up the churches, to fire the churches up, to get you out them doors, doing what God's called us to do. To stir you up and fire you up and get you back in the race. Some of you quit your race. Some of you sat down. Some of you become uh, uh, spectators instead of participators. Now I'm here to get you up off them benches and pews and get you back out there running in your race. Come on. Can I hear an amen? Mm -hmm. So in the end, you can hear this from mighty God. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. I want to hear that when it's all done. Paul said, I ran my race. Now there's a crown laid up for me. And everyone else who's righteous, who does the work and will of God, there's a crown laid up for them also. Don't you want a crown in the end? The Bible says, in my, Jesus said, in my Father's house, there is many mansions. And where I go, there will you be also. I go to prepare you a place. He didn't say a mansion. He said a place. Some of you are going to have some little huts. It depends on your work you do. You can laugh at that and do whatever you want. Some of you are going to have a hut, a village hut. You're going to have a little hut instead of a mansion. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. If you go with me over here, I'm talking about playing church. I'm talking about people who's building their foundation upon the uh, wood, hay, and stubble. I'm talking about people, Jesus said over in Matthew chapter 7, He's talking about many will come to him in that day and say, Lord, Lord, haven't I done this for you? Ain't I prophesied? Ain't I cast out demons? The devil did miracles in your name? And he confessed to him. He said, I do not know you. He didn't know them. They claimed they knew him, but they didn't really know him or they've been doing his will. He said, I will liken you to a wise man who built his house upon the rock. On the rock, what? Jesus Christ, the word of God. 
And when the winds and the storms came, uh, the house stood. For many people are playing church and they built their house upon the sands. He said, I will liken you to a wise man. And he said, who built his house upon the rock? Or I will liken you into a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And when the winds and storms came, it fell. You see, when the storms of life come, you're going to fall if you're just playing church. There's a devil out there and ain't playing with you, and he wants you out the way. There's a devil out there, and if you don't know how to fight him on his own turf, and if you don't know how to do spiritual warfare, you don't know how to come back against the enemy. The we weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, and the pulling down of strongholds. See, you got to pull down the strongholds in your own self first to pull down strongholds in others. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Too, and me, too many of you out there in the church are in the wrong fight. You're fighting other churches. You should be fighting demon forces. You wrestle not against people, churches, flesh and blood but against principalities, powers, dominions, and might, and wickedness in high places. Come on. We need to get in the right fight, and we need to quit playing church, dressing up, going through our same old religious motions all the time. It stinks up the nostrils of God. Can I tell you today? Change. There's change coming to the church. Amen. You can count on that. Watch this. Jesus over in Matthew. The name of this message today, by the way, Church as usual. See, some of you, you go to church and you expect church to be the same every time. In, uh, you go to church, you, you, you know everything you're going to do. God can't never be in it and do something different. If they do anything different, if the preacher does anything different or the minister does anything different, well, we don't like that. That ain't church as we know it. Well, honey, you don't know God. Honey, we ain't going to have church as usual no more. God's going to upset that. Watch and see. Over here in Matthew chapter 14, 15, it says in verse 1, Then came Jesus and scribes, Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do the disciples transgress the traditions of your elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? You see, they was going by man-made laws and ordinances. I know churches have man-made laws and ordinances that isn't, isn't even in the Word of God. They got a dress code. Who put a dress code in the church? Honey, if that's all you got, that's all you got. You coming for God, not man. Amen. And if they say something about you, the way you dress, as long as it's not lustful, honey, you need to get up and get out of there because they, they're not looking under Jesus. They're looking under man and looking at man. And judging you. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and thy mother. He cursed his father and mother, let him die to death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father and his mother is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. And honor not his father and his mother, he shall be free. Thus have you made commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. You hypocrites. He called you a bunch of hypocrites. Well did Elias prophesy of you, saying, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Some of you go to church and you play church. Come on. I'm going to show you how the disciples did it. They played church too. They didn't listen to what was preached. They never entered in with the praise and worship. They never entered into anything. They looked at church. They go to church looking for a woman. They think the church is a social club. Come on. <laughs> Amen. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines and commandments of men. Oh my, oh my. You see, some people go through the same old rituals and ceremonies. They go to church and they'll dance and they'll holler, hoot and holler. And they leave the church. And it's like they do this. Over in Timothy, it says uh, they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. They come into church on Sundays, honey. They got they all clothed in their white garments of salvation. They all clothed in their purified, beautiful white gowns. They put them on when they come to church on Sundays, honey. But they have a form of godliness, honey. That's an outward appearance. But God looks at the hearts and knows the hearts. And then when they come into church, they hang up their garment. Or when they leave the church, they leave their robe of righteousness, their robe of salvation there. And they take it off and they go out and live like the world for a week. And then they come back in on Sunday morning. Your Sunday morning uh, 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 
roll over, get out of bed Christians who never go to church any other time but Sunday mornings. I'm talking about playing church today. We need to quit playing church. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm talking about your Sunday Christian Christians who never do nothing to come in and put a nickel or a dime in the offering or put a dollar and think they've done something for the kingdom of God. Come in dressed up, look good. Amen. And Jesus even rebuked them when they gave. He told the Pharisees and the scribes, they brought in the offering, they were bragging about how much they gave. Well, they were playing church, honey. They want to look good. Some of you want to look good, look big above people. I'm talking about playing church today. We play in church. Yeah, I'm a player. I play church. Some of you players in the world. Some of you players in the church. Oh, I don't like you, preacher. Why well, do you? That's why I'm telling you. Quit playing. Your house is being built upon the, 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 the sand. And when the storms and adversities of life come, you ain't going to stand. Hallelujah. You can't play church no more. There's a dividing line in the church. And you can't play church no more. You can't ride the fence line no more. You can't ride it no more. You can't get away with it in the church no more. Judgment begins in the house of God. Honey, I'm giving you nothing but the word of God, the pure and adulterated word of God, and the word out of the Spirit of the Lord, the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We can't play church as usual no more. And, and, and they came and they put in the offerings, and, and they took took up the offerings and they bragged well look how much these pharisees and scribes put in jesus said they ain't done no more than this little poor widow woman here they gave out their abundance some of them people some of you go to church you got millions you could put in to the offerings but you ain't gonna give it you're gonna put it in your your home you ain't gonna put it in the house of god some of you you put in you put in out of your abundance she put in out of her want that little widow woman that, that her two mites she put out of her nest necessity. Some of you, if you had to give like that, you wouldn't give. You'd backslide. You wouldn't give God nothing. The man that was rich come up to Jesus and said, What must I do to keep the commandments of God here in the kingdom of heaven? And he said, Go give away your riches. And the Bible says he walked away from Jesus. And Jesus said, How hardly can a rich man enter into the kingdom of heaven? It's like the, uh, the camel going through the eye of the needle. Come on. And, and, and that's not figure, figuratively speaking, a real camel through the eye of a sewing needle. There's a passage in, in, in Israel over there, and it's called the eye of the needle. It's, it's like a canyon, and it's a real narrow passage. Can I hear an amen? But you see, too many people has church as usual, playing church. Hallelujah. Let's go over here Matthew chapter 26. I'm going to show you how they played church. Even the disciples that walk with Jesus. Jesus, over here, and I'm going to catch you up on the story in uh, Matthew chapter 26. Jesus, uh, 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 Judas done went and sold Jesus out for money. Some of y'all selling Jesus out for money. Come on. Amen. He sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. Jesus sat down, and he said in verse 18, 26, 18, and he said, Go into the city to such a man and say to him, The master said, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had pointed them, and they made ready to Passover. You see, Jesus was getting ready to go to be the Passover. He was telling them. They wasn't listening. They were playing church. When Jesus preached to them, they didn't listen. They were playing church. There's some of you that's played church for so long, you never listen what's prophesied to you. Jesus was prophesying to them, telling them everything that was going to take place in heaven. Oh, not me, Jesus. I'd never do that. Yeah, I've heard that too. Oh, pastor, I pastor. Oh, pastor, we'll stick with you to thick and thin to the end. Well, it must have been a quick end. I don't see him no more. Amen. Plan church. God's sick of church players. Come on. In Revelation chapter 3, to the church of, Phil, uh, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, Laodicea. You know what he said? I wish that I were cold or hot because you're playing church. It's what he was talking about. You're playing church. You plan church. You rich. You blessed. You become a blessing club. You don't need. You don't have need of nothing now. You're so blessed and rich. You just sit there and play church now. You don't care if the world goes to hell. You just sit there and play church. Amen. And he rebuked them. 
He said, I try, I, I try, if you buy me gold tried in the fire. As many as I love, I rebuke. You see, if Jesus ain't rebuking you somewhere in your life, something then your life ain't right. Because he says, as many as I love, I rebuke. So it's okay to be rebuked by the Lord. Because he loves you. He does it out of love, not out of hate or anger. Can I hear an amen? There's a difference to rebuke somebody out of love and not hate and anger. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Now, let's get back over here to the story here in Matthew chapter 26. Jesus sat down. Watch this. <clears throat> Jesus told them that some would betray him, Judas. They would all forsake him, the disciples, in verse 56. We'll get over there. But over here, uh, uh, Jesus said right here, <clears throat> and as they did eat, in verse 21, he said, Verily I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. You see, I'm going to tell you something. In this journey and walk with God, there's people that's going to betray you. Come on. I'm talking to other ministers. These were apostles. These were apostles walking with Jesus. There's people, I don't care if they're ministers, they're going to betray you. Why? Sell you out for money, sell you out for glory, sell you out for all kinds of stuff. They, he sold Jesus out for money. And he was an apostle, Judas was, to walk with him, did signs and wonders. Come on. Hallelujah. And then, and he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. Watch this. <clears throat> And they were exceedingly sorrowful and began every one of them to say, Lord, is it I? Is it me? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. You see, there's people that will sit and eat with you that will betray with you. Eat your own food. Can I hear an amen? They'll sit and eat with you, still betray you. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Plan church. Plan church. I want to be an apostle. I want to be a prophet. I want you out of the way because God's using you. Come on, there's some jealous people in the body of Christ. God's using you, so I don't like you or I want you out of the way. I've stood up and give testimonies in the church, and I've had people say, I hate you. I hate you. I said, why? Because they always talk about you. Put you on a pedestal. I wasn't there to be put on a pedestal. I wasn't there to be talked about, but I'm not ashamed of the testimony of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says in Revelation 12, 11, uh, uh, thank you, Jesus, glory to God. Hallelujah. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. You see, you've got to give testimonies. But this person, because I gave testimonies, why? Because I love God and I want people to get hold of testimonies to see what God has done for one he'll do for another. He's no respect of persons. And this person got jealous and I hated you. And I just hoped you'd drop out of church. Why? Because they're jealous. I just want you to get out of the way so God can use me. Well, honey, there's room in the kingdom for God to use everybody. Come on. We need to repent in the body of Christ and get our motives and our hearts right. Amen? Stop playing church. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Watch this. Over here in... And, and he went on down, and he said, This is my body. They broke the bread, and they drank the cup. And he said, This is my body that's broken for you, that I give for you, for your salvation. This is the cup of, uh, of, of it was a shadow and type of the blood that would be shed for our salvation, for our healing, for everything else. Then Jesus said unto them, All ye, in verse 31, shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep, and the flock shall be scattered abroad. And after I am risen again, I will go before thee in Galilee. Watch this. And when they had sung an hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Oh, here goes church as usual. Watch this, church as usual. Oh, boy, we're here. We're going to hoot and holler. We're going to have a real good time. Hallelujah in the Holy Ghost. Boy, we're going to shout and we're going to holler. Honey, you heard this old saying, it ain't how high you can jump. It's how straight you fly when you come down. Some people talk to walk. And walk to talk, but some people talk to talk and don't walk to walk. That's playing church. That's what he said over there when I just told you about going Matthew chapter 26. Your man made traditions have brought the kingdom of God and my word to no effect. Playing church. Jesus told him, then he preached to him. You see, there's many times 
we come in together and we sing our hymns and we have our praise and worship service and everything and the preacher preaches and prophesies and it didn't do nothing. They wasn't listening. They come back against the preacher. Watch. Peter and them come back against the prophet of God. Come back against the son of God. Watch. Then said Jesus unto him, All you shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended? Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me three times. Plan church. Plan church. The man of God just, many times people go to church and they don't listen to what the man of God is preaching from the church. Sometimes he may be prophesying and he is preaching what the enemy's getting ready to do or what's getting ready to happen in the world and they don't even listen. Oh, that's not for me. That word ain't for me. How many times you went to church and said, well, that word ain't for me. Yes, it is. That was for Peter and he didn't listen. He's full of pride. He's puffed up and that's the way a lot of people are. Come on. Hallelujah. He said, you all will forsake me, and you'll follow me afar off. Over in verse 58, he said, they said that they followed him afar off. Even turned around and denied him. You see, that's just the way we are. Plan church, plan church, plan church. Jesus told him what was going to happen. He said, be ready. Watch this. Now, going down in verse 37 and verse 36, they went into the garden of Gethsemane, and Jesus says, Sit here while I go and pray yonder. He took with him Peter and two sons, Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. And he said unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even though to death tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, O my father, if it be possible, let us cut past me. Nevertheless, not thy will be done, but thy will be done. And he cometh to the disciples, find them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What could you not have watched with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation, for the spirit indeed is willing and the flesh is weak. Then he went away the second time, and they went to sleep again. Too many people are going to sleep to plan church. The Bible says over in Corinthians, talking about communion, it says, For this reason many are asleep and are sick, because they do not discern the Lord's body. You see, some people go out and live an a, a ungodly lifestyle all week long, and then they run back into church on Sunday and put their holy robes back on, like I said earlier, to hang them up when they leave. And they play church, and they come in, and the Bible says they're asleep because they don't discern the Lord's body, for the Lord is holy. And they go out and live an unholy life all week long, and they come into church on Sundays, and they want to play church. And then, whenever this happens, if you're guilty of that, just repent today. Seek God. Quit playing church. Get a hold of God. Let him get a hold of you and he'll change you. Too many people never get a hold of God. They never get a change in their life. Can I hear an amen? And, and then they, they come in and watch this. There's those who walk with God, who serve God, and, and they truly serve God. Can I hear an amen? They're not playing church. they real with God and God's real with them. Then these people come in, they repent a, repent a whole service, and those spirits they brought in there intermix and mingle with the congregation and then the people is not in one mind and one accord and then we can't have a move of God. And you wonder why we don't see no moves of God in the church. Because you got people that don't enter in. They don't enter in with one mind and one accord with the move of God, with what God's doing in the church. And then they hinder the flow of God. Plan church. I'm talking about plan church. I'm talking about need to repent of that plan church and get real. Jesus told the church of Laodicea in Revelation chapter 3, he said, y'all played church long enough. I wish that were hot or cold. You know what he was saying? I wish you'd just either go on, backslide, and get out, quit hindering the church and the people, and when you get done with all your sin and get done playing, come on back in and get on fire and serve me. I wish that were hot or cold. If you're hot, you're going to serve me. Because you're lukewarm, you compromise. You're a bunch of compromisers. You compromise. You, you don't need nothing. You don't even need me anymore. You're so blessed. You see, too many people come in and are so blessed, they just plan church, going through the motions. Can I hear an amen? People, we need to stop that. Church as usual, look what they did. Peter went on down here to deny Jesus. He did exactly what Jesus prophesied and told him. You see, when the preacher preaches, he preaches for a reason. He wants you to get this so you can get your, 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 your body and your mind and your life in line with the Word of God. Can I hear an amen? 
They ain't even listen to the preacher. They ain't listen to what Jesus prophesied. A lot of people don't listen in the name of Jesus. Their foundation is built upon sand. And then they wonder why they go through everything they go through. Plan church as usual. Honey, we got to get out of our traditions. We got to get out of our comfort zones in the church. And we need to come in and get real and get right with God. Quit giving him lip and mouth service. And we need to hook up with the living God. And then we'll become one with each other, one with him. And we'll see the Holy Ghost come in. Because on the day of Pentecost in chapter 2, it says they was in 120 in one mind and one accord. And suddenly the Holy Ghost showed up. And there was a move of God now pouring the Holy Spirit. Honey, if you want revival now pouring the Holy Spirit, we got to get hold of God and quit playing church. We got to quit going through our religious ceremonies and traditions and man made religion and everything and get a hold of God and He'll come and get a hold of us and we'll see a move of God. We'll see a manifestation of the Spirit of God moving in the church. We'll see a manifestation of the power and the glory of God come back into the church. Amen. Quit playing church. It's time to get a hold of Jesus. It's time to get a hold of God and watch and see a move of God. God wants to pour out his spirit over this whole city. God wants to pour his spirit out on all place, but you got to be willing to want it because he ain't visiting where he's not wanted. Come on. Oh my God, if you don't know Jesus today, say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. And I believe you died for my sins. Your word says in Romans 10, 10, 9 through 12, that <clears throat> if I confess with my mouth that you died for my sins, and I believe in my heart unto righteousness, that I would be saved. If you said that prayer today, say, Jesus, come into my heart, wash me clean, save me. Get in church and serve him. Church, it's time to get back on track for God. Quit playing church. It's time to get, be about the Father's business, doing his business, not ours. My God, we love this city, and I want to see God move in all the churches. Amen. We'll see you next program.